All right, here we go, a little MMT lesson, because many of you have been asking me, well, you ask me about a lot of different uh, conceptual aspects of MMT, but here's what I want to talk about today, because it's kind of timely, it's kind of relevant to what is going on. Uh, now, back in January at the last Fed meeting, uh, there was some talk, and it wasn't very clear, and I spoke about this in uh, a, a video that I made with Powell's remarks after the Fed meeting and even in the statement that was released by the Fed. What are they doing with the balance sheet? Are they continuing to allow uh, their securities, treasuries, agencies, MBS to roll off? In other words, are they still shrinking their balance sheet by 50 billion a month or have they stopped? And I felt Powell's comments were sufficiently opaque. To me, it sounded like they were stopping. And, and there's been now, and a lot of people disagreed with me and they said, no, it's definitely going to continue. There's no doubt it's going to continue. But I don't know, there was some, uh, stuff out there that I've been reading recently saying like yeah they're gonna stop and they're gonna keep reserves at current levels which are still very high I mean I've mentioned here and I pointed out the current level of reserves in the system 1.6 trillion the Fed did a survey last year I believe asking the banks what level of reserves do you feel comfortable with? Now, mind you, for 40 years, 30, 40 years, the level of reserves in the system were, was never more than 800 billion. And then the Fed, you know, ran it up to two and a half trillion during the crisis and kept it up there and has slowly been bringing it down to 1.6 trillion now. But the bank said, we only need 600 billion. That's all we need. So, the Fed is keeping a trillion more. Now, the problem with this, and I've explained it in the past, is that while reserves are assets for the banks and they're non-risk assets, meaning the reserves themselves don't require any capital, they do factor into bank leverage ratios, which is another regulatory um, metric that banks have to conform to, and that does those reserves do increase their leverage ratios and um, puts them in a position where they need more capital so when you load the banks up with reserves trillions we're talking trillions it inhibits their ability to lend unless they raise more capital so they can't take on risk assets like loans because they have all these reserves and reserves Okay, now they're earning more money, 2.5%, but for a long time they earned zero. But anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what, what happens or the misconception about uh, quantitative easing, you know, when the Fed expands its balance sheet and this so-called quantitative tightening, they've labeled it, that's when the Fed contracts or reduces its balance sheet. Right now, if you go back, to the financial crisis 2008-2009 when the Fed was really engaging with these extraordinary monetary measures and quantitative easing everybody out there said that's going to be the end of the dollar it's going to collapse you had all these quacks plus very respectable Wall Street you know respectable Wall Street economists saying the dollar is finished I said the opposite I said the dollar is going to go up. Now, why is that true? When the Fed buys assets, it is removing those assets and the income earned from those assets. It's taking them out of the economy and it's keeping them for itself. So all that income, which was previously earned by the economy, those dollars that went into the economy, they're getting stripped out. And they go into the black hole of the Fed's own account. They're taken out of the economy. So that's bullish for the dollar. You're literally, literally removing those dollars from the economy. And, and of course, what we saw after the initial spike down in the dollar, the dollar went on this long-term rise, which I called. I did the video in 2009. I said the dollar is going to go on a long-term rise. Now, what about the reverse? What's happening now?
with the balance sheet reduction. So think of it, think of it, it's the opposite. Instead of taking out those assets and keeping the income for itself, the Fed now allows those assets to remain in the economy. They let it roll off of their books so it remains in the economy and the economy earns the, that income, it earns those dollars, it is functionally a fiscal expansion. The money flows into the economy, the dollars flow into the economy, billions upon billions, hundreds of billions now in interest income earned in the economy. So it's a fiscal expansion. Now all of these quacks and these kooks, they all think now that this is bullish for the dollar. It's not. This is the, literally they're printing money. They're printing money. This is the printing money that all these goofballs were talking about during QE, which was never <laughs> printing money, all right? This is it. So yeah, you have the initial zombie misinformed reaction of everybody buying the dollar because they're thinking, oh, quantitative tightening, right? It's not a tightening. They're putting all those assets back into the economy. They're leaving them there. Let the economy earn those dollars. It's an expansion of dollars. So that's what's happening. I just wanted to explain that. MMT lesson. Bye.